Well, Cancer, it's August 2019, Didici here, and I wanted to talk about some important things here, especially based upon this new moon taking place here on August 1st with Venus, Mars, the Sun, in your second house of money, income, earnings. But you know, that's a really superficial view of things here. The second house of the horoscope has a great deal to say about your value system generally. So when we see the new moon here, we see, yes, there may be opportunities to earn money. Here after the third, we see the um, strong movement of the waxing moon in your third house of communication, thinking things through. But this is really about redefining your value system, what it is that means something to you, not just what it is that you earn. Because often when you earn money, it may be through a job, as is the case with most people, you just really don't like. So I think that's the um, the key focus there to start the month. Fifth house moon makes you a lot more creative, and that's precisely what I'm talking about. Look at the challenges here, these right angles to these three planets in your second house from this fifth house of creativity. So you're wanting to be more creative. You're wanting to look at new vistas of how you can earn and how you can redefine yourself in terms of your value system, and more importantly, redefining yourself in terms of how you value yourself. That can also take place with the moon here in the sixth house after the ninth, coming into conjunction with Jupiter. Notice here these planets are all still in their retrograde motion. Uranus, however, in your eleventh house has gone forward, and that can bring some activity and some sudden or unexpected events associated with friendships here. You notice it's gone stationary here on the 11th. So that is interesting. That shows it's also getting ready to maybe do a retrograde step here. Moon is in the seventh house here around the 12th and 13th. That can present problems in terms of your relationships because this area of the zodiac has to do with your marriage. There's that retrogression of Uranus. So those sudden and unexpected events that I'm talking about take place in the social arena here. That may also relate to elder siblings or maybe even siblings generally because if this is a sun sign chart, we can't exactly be sure. Um, notice here the full moon in your eighth house. I think that's significant. That's very, very telling around the 15th and 16th. Banking matters. Um, annuities, taxation, uh, but also intimate matters such as sexuality. It's about being vulnerable. It's also about that value focus that I'm talking about here. Evaluating yourself and using the people that you choose to be with in your life as yardsticks for that value. Idealism is strong here after the 18th with the moon and Neptune in your ninth house. And then, bang, moon moving into your 10th house of career. Nice trine aspects here. You notice that Mars has moved away from this value sector, this finance sector, but that still gives you the opportunity after the full moon to maybe enhance your earnings. A lot of these planets are gonna shift later in the month from this purely financial sector to this third sector of communication. Look at that powerful Mars moon trine aspect. Excellent time to be talking about that pay rise that you want if value and finances is the main thrust for you. Venus moves into its debilitated sign of Virgo around the 21st. A lot of passion here shown by the Venus-Mars conjunction. Traveling maybe on the cards. A shift in your mentality. A restlessness. And that may be a bit of nitpicking there. As you know, Virgo is prone to finding fault. So be careful of how you communicate. We notice here too that these two planets, Venus and Mars, come under what's known as sunbeams. So it's even more important that at this time you don't allow your, um, I guess, your critical nature, your critical eye to get the better of you. You may end up in some sort of disputes there. Generally, however, we see with friends at least the very nice trine aspect to Uranus here, albeit retrograde. Moon is here in opposition to Saturn. That can make you feel a little bit under the weather for a couple of days. And that again has to do with relationships. It's a dark moon 
here it returns back to this sector of the zodiac having to do with finance and money. Mercury is still here but moves out just in the last day or two of the month and along with the moon on the 30th, 31st into this sector of communication. Again highlighting this very important shift from money into this communication um, thinking zone. So this is where it ends up. Fortunately on the last day of the month these are all fortifying aspects with the exception of Neptune here uh, and Jupiter. These two idealistic planets means that you may be out of step with some of the people you're communicating or negotiating with. Just take a back, a back seat there and let the conversation go the way it will and don't be too forceful or critical and you should be okay. Astrology.com.au is my site there. We have a lot more information for you. You might want to take a look at that. And if you're really serious about astrology, I always recommend just drop me a note and we can organize a time to look at your horoscope uh, in what I prefer as a sidereal Vedic Hindu system of astrology. Far more telling, really focused on dates and the karma and when that karma is likely to come to fruition. Drop me a note here, subscribe, and I'll see you next month. Take care. Bye-bye.